Come into your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And we want to um, look at the uh, principles um, <clears throat> that uh, the Apostle Paul um, gives um, <clears throat> for the church at Corinth abusing the gift of languages. And um, um, we would uh, recognize that the church at Cor uh, Corinth um, was uh, carnal. And that carnality showed off, showed itself in um, their church services. And so these are some principles um, that uh, expose as well as our answers um, uh, to uh, carnality in the worship services of the Lord. And we realize that uh, we are dealing with gifts and the abuse of the gift that God had given them, um, but we're going to use that as a form to really deal with what is the general overall subject of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and how he exposes um, the errors that were taking place. And really what we're going to see is that um, the overriding principle, as we know, is the church at Corinth um, was carnal. And uh, they're walking in the flesh and they were, um, that fleshliness uh, showed itself uh, in their services and in the abuse of tongues. And we're gonna use that as a forum to speak of three general principles of uh, a proper worship service. And, um, and so as we look at uh, 1 Corinthians 14, we're gonna see those three um, outstanding principles that the Apostle Paul applies to the service at uh, church services at Corinth. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14, verse 1, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. Now remember, charity is the opposite of carnality. Um, carnality is self-centeredness. Charity is uh, a selfless, um, a godly love. Follow after charity, desire spiritual gifts, but rather that she may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, in other words, a language that the people um, don't know, uh, but uh, is uh, um, a spoken language, uh, spoken by the person with the gift. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries, or the truth of God's word. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied, for greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. And so we find the first great principle um, of, uh, of, the, of uh, Paul's answer was that uh, the purpose of a church worship service was the edifying of the believers. And it was the purpose of edifying the believers through the ministry of the Word of God. And um, um, obviously, if I came up here and I started to speaking in um, uh, Swahili, I doubt that anybody here, maybe Stephen might get a little bit out of it, and Christina, but you wouldn't get a thing out of it. And uh, I'd be uh, uh, preaching, and boy, you know, um, talking about some great things, and about the th great things of the Word of God, and uh, um, I would be edified uh, by what uh, talking about these great things of God, but you wouldn't get a thing out of it. You wouldn't get a thing out of it. And that's exactly what was happening at uh, Church Corinth. The only problem is they knew it. They knew it. 
They knew that other people weren't being edified. They knew that it wasn't producing anything uh, for good. They knew that they were just uh, enjoying themselves and uh, using their gift, but um, it was carnal. It was for self. And it wasn't for edification. And so he said, if, if um, um, it says, but rather that ye prophesy, for greater is he that prophesieth. Why? Um, that the church may receive edification. The building up of the church. Now, Acts chapter uh, 20, notice what the Apostle Paul um, said to the church uh, there at Ephesus. Okay, in verse 32, Now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. That's the word edify. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. And, uh, you know, the purpose of uh, their gathering together was to edify the people through the word of God, to build them up. And, of course, the pro word prophesy, we think of the word prophesy um, as, as uh, you know, okay, tomorrow you're going to uh, go down the street and um, you're going to run over a caterpillar, you know. Um, no, prophesying in the Bible, the main truth, the main idea uh, of prophesying is to speak um, on behalf of God to speak on behalf of God, to give man God's message, okay? That's prophesying, to speak in place of. And uh, so in the Bible, Aaron was uh, Moses' prophet. Moses said, Aaron, this is what you're supposed to tell, tell um, Pharaoh. And Aaron said it. He didn't say his own words. He said exactly what Aaron, uh, Moses told him. He was the prophet. And uh, a prophet speaks on behalf of someone else. It gives somebody else's message. And uh, um, that, obviously, we recognize that um, uh, in the local church is the teaching and the preaching of the word of God. And so the, um, the uh, um, message the focus is the giving of the word of God. And you know, you think about it, um, today um, in the carnal churches, the Bible isn't really important. What's important? What's important? A lot of other things. You know, Will Creek, they spent, uh, this is 40 years ago, they were spending over a million dollars for hiring professional musicians and professional actors to perform every Sunday to entertain the people. That's not the purpose of a church service. Entertainment is not the purpose of church. You know, if people are going to church for a feeling, um, they are going for entertainment. They're not going, if you're going to church for a feeling, I remember talking to a lady who was going to one of these CCM churches, and she says, you know, I don't have to worry about, I don't even care about the preaching. By the time the preaching has come, I've been crying and I've been shouting, and that's all I need. She didn't need the Bible at all because they didn't come for the Bible. They came for entertainment. And uh, you see the selfish nature of the Corinthian church. The focus was wrong. The Bible tells us the focus is the word of God. Now, you know what? People can come to church for their friends. Now, praise the Lord. You know, we're supposed to, in, uh, uh, Hebrews 10 tells us, you know, that we are to exhort one another daily. It tells us that let us hold fast the profession of our faith and provoke one another unto good works. But you know what? You don't come to church 
to meet your friends and to sit by your friends. That is not why you come to church. You come to church to hear the word of God. If you're coming to sit for your friends and to have a good time with your friends, that is selfish carnal. You come to hear the word of God. Now, at the end of the chapter, um, we find two other important principles of, of the services. And uh, I think it would be good for us to look at verse 40. And uh, we see a summary statement here, and these uh, three things that we're going to talk, we've talked about one. Verse 40, let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. The word decently is sometimes uh, uh, translated honestly. Um, um, and it has the idea of, of, of appropriateness. Um, and it has the idea of something that is fitting, something that is right, something that is proper. Now notice in the, um, the church there, the pro they, had, they were doing some things that weren't decent, that weren't proper, uh, that weren't fitting. Notice verse um, um, 34, uh, um, it uh, says, uh, let your women keep silence in the churches. Now, just uh, um, we recognize this is not talking about the fake Holy Spirit of the tongues movement, of the charismatic movement. But, you know, if you have ever... Uh, been around the charismatic movement, you know the majority of the people speaking in uh, fake tongues are women. And um, um, they are easily, it uh, violates, obviously, 1 Timothy um, chapter 2. And uh, you always have a problem when uh, women are the dominant force in a family, or women are the dominant force in a church. Notice in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11, let the women learn in silence with all subjection. In other words, um, a uh, submissive spirit to God. And not, not an argumentative spirit, not a fighting spirit, not a a spirit that wants to do its own thing. Um, it says, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed and then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. And it tells us the dangers of, uh, of, um, uh, of a woman dominated uh, church because women are easily deceived. And women are not uh, to be the spiritual leaders. And they would tend to lead more in the area of emotion than in doctrine. And, um, but um, it says, let all things be done decently. And this would be one of the things. Notice uh, in 1 Corinthians 11, um, it talks about some things that are proper uh, in the church. Verse 4. Every man, uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 4, every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors his head. Every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonors her head. And here it would be uh, talking about that which is a, a decent, which is appropriate um, in the, the service. It's talking about 1 Corinthians 11, uh, 14, doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. He's talking about these outward things that would make the service um, not, or not uh, appropriate, fitting to godliness and to God's plan. And um, um, he says, so let all things be done decently, honestly, appropriately. And um, 
this is a very uh, important uh, um, issue. You know, 1 Timothy 2, in verse 9, it says, Like manner that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety and with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. You know what the Lord is saying? Is saying that, you know what, if you walk into a church and you have a bunch of immodest women, that's a carnal church. It's a carnal church. You have young ladies trying to attract the eyes of young men. That's a carnal church. The Corinthian church was a carnal church. It was uh, motivated by carnality. Not by God, not by submitting to the Holy Spirit, not following God's plan. And uh, so he's saying that uh, the remedy to this carnal church is that your church is about the edification being built up in the word of God. Secondly, he's saying the church is to be a church where it is decent, it is honest, it is appropriate, fitting. It's obviously outward form um, is not carnal. It's under the authority of God. And all you have to do is walk into a church. And you can say, well, there's a carnal church. There's a carnal church. You know, young ladies don't dress inappropriately for no reason at all. And don't be foolish to think that they don't. It's carnality. Carnality. Now notice the last principle. Let all things be decently done decently and in what? Order. God is a God of order. Now, who doesn't like to follow orders? Who doesn't like to follow orders? Do carnal people like to follow orders? Carnal people don't like to follow orders. They want to do it their way. And the Corinthians were doing it their way. And uh, so he's giving them um, some principles of orderliness that they have violated. Um, and uh, let's look at those a little bit. It says um, in verse uh, 26, it says, How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation? Now, this was um, point number one. They did not come for edification. They came for self-glorification. They came to, because to show them selves as uh, spiritual. They showed, they did the things that they did for personal attention. But notice it says, verse 27, if a man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. Well, this is uh, um, an orderly uh, service. It says, and if there be no interpreter, then let him keep silence in the churches. Well, this is pretty, uh, pretty standard procedure um, if you um, understand the purpose of a church. So um, I go to Hungary, and um, I can't speak but a few words of Hungarian. And, you know, um, um, I would be of no, it'd be no blessing to those people for me to uh, get up there and preach, and they not understand a word I have to say. Okay, um, um, they could be like uh, the the people in Africa. Um, the uh, the uh, missionary had a guest speaker, and uh, he uh, uh, said to the guest speaker, "Now don't tell any uh, of your jokes." and any of your stories, because Africans don't understand American stories and they don't understand American jokes. And the fellow says, well, if, um, if I had to eliminate those, I, don't, I, I wouldn't have anything to say. 
And uh, so uh, the missionary knew this about how uh, typical preachers are. And uh, so he told the people, he says, now, when the preacher uh, gives a joke, laugh. Now, you may not understand it, but just laugh, you know. Make them feel like you understand that it's a joke, okay? Well, that would be like for me to preach in Hungarian and all the people, I'm preaching English to the Hungarians, they not understand a word, and they oh, praise the Lord, what a great sermon. Well, that'd be, that'd be foolishness. Now, he says this. He says, orderliness. No one speaks in a foreign language unless, first of all, before anything is done, you have an interpreter. That's pretty simple, isn't it? You got to have an interpreter. Mr. Simonson isn't going to go up to Katakuyu and, uh, um, and hold a service, and uh, all these people in there are uh, speaking uh, uh, um, um, Kikuyu, and um, he speaks in English and thinks they're going to get something out of it. It's not going to work. He's going to have an interpreter ahead of time before he even plans on going there. And this is what he's saying. He says, orderliness. Now he says, um, um, don't have any more than two or three people. Don't have any more than two or three people. And make sure they do it one at a time by course. In other words, ahead of time, you say, okay, you're first, you're second, you're third. Okay? Now, obviously at the Church of Corinth, um, there wasn't any order. Um, they, weren't, uh, they weren't coming under or authority. They just wanted to talk. They just wanted to show off. They wouldn't come under or orders. And then um, um, it says, uh, um, let him, and it says, if there's no interpreter, let him keep silence. Now, um, if you go on to think about this, not only do you see that the modern charismatic movement not, is not only a fake spirit, um, but it in every way violates what the word of God says that the church of Corinth was supposed to do with legitimate tongues. Have an interpreter ahead of time who could speak that language. And don't do it. Only, only do it, I have it all planned out ahead of time. And uh, make sure it's one at a time and it's in order and you got an interpreter, all that. But order. You know, um, let me give you an illustration of orderliness, of disorderliness. And I'm not um, picking on the people in Africa. I love the people in Africa. Um, obviously, um, uh, they mean an awful lot to us, the ministry there. But, you know, as I taught in a Bible college, as I was the last time I was teaching on Leviticus, I realized I was kind of um, teaching about how um, Leviticus, they had some very high standards for the, for the high priest, and they had very delineated, um, you know, the high standards for about who could be a high priest. And um, if they didn't meet those standards, they couldn't be a high priest. And um, in the process, um, I got onto a subject, and I realized they didn't have a clue what I was talking about. I said... Um, began to talk about having that in your church you should have leadership standards. Should have leadership standards. In other words, you don't serve unless you meet these qualifications. Now, that wasn't in their thinking. And... Um, I realized even after I got done teaching, it wasn't in their thinking. Because how does it go? Uh, in a typical church in Africa, um, uh, maybe, maybe this is exaggeration, but this is how I think. 
they um, say, hey, you know, um, so-and-so's got a song they want to sing. Um, they want to sing today. Okay. They got, they got a song to sing. Um, or so-and-so um, wants to preach. And uh, um, etc. And it it doesn't matter about how the kind of life they're living. It doesn't matter, you know, if the song is right or not. You know, they got a song, let them sing. You know, a lot of people have that idea today. They buck at leadership standards. They buck at you know, if you're going to be a Sunday school teacher, you, you uh, ought to follow what the code is. You ought to be uh, loyal to the leadership of the church, and you ought to be an example of holiness and what the church stands for. And you try to enforce that, and people, they buck. They buck. You know what? That's carnality. That's carnality. That's carnal Christianity when you don't want to have orderliness. Now, along the same line, you know, um, uh, a typical African can't understand why a woman can't preach. <laughs> they can't comprehend that. Now, I can get it because their society is a matriarchal society. And uh, in many cases, um, you know, that the, the, the women uh, hold the family together. And in many cases, um, um, and I think it's uh, changing to a degree, but I never forget uh, going to Kenya the first time and seeing this lady um, with a bundle of sticks on top of her head. I mean, it was huge. And uh, she's carrying this bundle of sticks and her husband just walking right by her, carrying nothing. Why? Because the society is that men were supposed to hunt and to go to war. And they don't have any wars and there aren't any animals to hunt anymore. Um, so they don't have anything to do and the wife is supposed to do all the rest of the work. Well, that's a matriarchal society, isn't it? That's a matriarchal society. And so um, to say a woman can't preach because the Bible says so, whoa, that isn't in their thinking. But let's get back to basics. What's it saying? A carnal church. What's the remedy? What is the problem of a carnal church? A carnal church is about self. It's about me. I want to be in front of people. I want people to notice me. I want to be recognized. I want people to, you know, um, um, uh, recognize whatever I did. It's about me. It's not about God. God's being used, but it's about me. God's remedy, no, it's about God. It's about the word of God. You know, the word of God. You know, why do we have, why do we have hymns? Why do we have um, uh, the different parts of the service that we have? You know what? It's to prepare people for the word of God. It's to prepare people for the word of God. You know, when people come late to church, you know, that happens. But when people come late to church all the time, you wonder, why aren't they here to get ready for the service? How come they are choosing what part of the service they want to participate in and what part of the service they don't want to participate in? So a carnal church is not about spiritual edification. So the first principle of education, the second principle is appropriateness. 
appropriateness, decentness. What is recognizing what is appropriate for a worship service? This is a very, uh, and that's very significant. I would imagine that if you went to some place and uh, um, you uh, preached on, um, you know, um, on women dressing in such a way that they're bringing attention to themselves, who boy, I tell you what, you would enter a firestorm. Why? Because they don't understand the principle, they're selfish, they're carnal, and they don't understand the principle of appropriateness. And then the last issue, the issue of orderliness, coming under orders doing it God's way, God's way. And uh, that uh, would include such things as um, uh, submitting to um, leadership standards. That would be, in other words, as well as to how is it done? Why is it, and doing it the way that it's supposed to be done not just doing it any way that you want. And uh, so these are great, great uh, principles. And you can see how um, uh, the, the carnal person does not want to be under order. The carnal person does not have a sense of appropriateness because it's not about God, it's about them. And you can see how the carnal person, it's not about learning God's word and, and growing, it's about themselves. And uh, that was the real source of the problem at Corinth, carnality. And the answers are edification, decentness, orderliness. They are the remedy for carnality and they are certainly the remedy to even how a person uses their gifts for God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you tonight for very um, principles that are so important today. And Lord, we, we see a great rebellion today against the things of God people using their gifts the way they want to use them, church being a forum for entertainment, for carnality. And Lord, we pray that we will understand these very sacred principles. And we realize that Satan is the very one who would want to um, get in get in there and, uh, and use the violation of these things uh, to invade and to lead astray. And now, Lord, I pray that uh, um, any place in which um, the carnal selfish spirit has been exposed by your word tonight, I pray that, Lord, um, that it would be identified I pray that, Lord, that uh, um, our motives for the Lord's house would be correct. It would be one in which, Lord, you would have the, the liberty to work, and we would follow, Lord, the plans which allow you to work, an orderly um, a plan, and a plan of following appropriateness as given by the Bible and a plan, Lord, that furthers the word of God and the hearing of it and the receiving of it and the obeying of it. And Lord, I pray that you'll use your word while well, heads are bowed and eyes closed. Um, as we think about this very subject, maybe the Lord has uh, uh, spoken to you about uh, um, some changing some things that would make um, the house of the Lord a place of edification 
and not a place of carnality, a place in which uh, um, there is order, in which has been determined by the Spirit of God, and because uh, we have an orderly God, we have a God that is that there are things that are fitting for godliness. And the Lord has spoken to your heart tonight, and uh, maybe deep down you have forgotten why you come to church. And the Lord has spoken to you about uh, it is the Lord, and it is his word, and the change that the word of God brings in our hearts. You say, Pastor, pray with me tonight. The Lord has spoken my heart. There's a specific area that the Spirit of God has uh, uh, touched my soul on, and uh, I'm letting God have his way in my life tonight. Anyone here tonight, just lift up your hand and uh, say, Pastor, pray with me, okay? Amen. Amen. Okay, praise the Lord. Anyone else? The Lord has spoken my heart. Lord, I thank you for your word. Thank you for these great principles. May, uh, Lord, you work in the hearts of uh, those that have recognized this truth and recognized your way, your will, are willing to allow you to work. We realize that uh, in your mercy and grace, you uh, let us go forward step by step. And may this be a stepping stone of obedience to you. And may these principles, Lord, uh, stay in our hearts and minds in days ahead. In Jesus' name, amen.